A very good morning to you. Thank you very much for keeping it Why in the morning. This is Y254 TV. If at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. My name is Ram Aguko. Remember, we are coming to you live from our broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also live on our website. That is www.kbc.co.ke. Fourth slash Y254. We value your feedback and we encourage you to participate with us. Keep talking to us on our social media handles. I'm seeing many people are telling us that they are watching from different parts of the country. Tell us where you're watching us from. Now, this morning, we want to talk about HIV AIDS awareness. What is it that we need to do to increase awareness in terms of HIV and AIDS? How are we communicating about this particular issue? How was it back then? How is it now? Considering that we are in times of a COVID-19 pandemic, how are we communicating about the COVID-19 pandemic? All right. Vis-a-vis -vis how we are communicating about H we are communicating about HIV AIDS. Is there a way that you can learn lessons from one and implement on the other? Is there a way that we can be able to pick lessons and also implement them on the ground? What are the do's and the don'ts that were there on HIV that we need to implement on COVID-19? Today, let's talk about HIV and AIDS. And to help us in this conversation, I'm joined by none other than Dr. Bernice Gatere. She is the executive director at the TWR Kenya, uh, that is Transworld Radio Kenya. Karibu sana, Daktari. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. I am well, thank Uko you. Salama sana. Kabisa. Uh, uh, and even as we talk about this particular conversation, I'd like to engage with you. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ram Aguko and at Y254 channel is where you can find us, engage with us even on our Facebook platform. We've posted a question there on our Facebook page. Uh, go to our Facebook page there, drop in your comment and we shall read or sample your uh, comment as you continue with this conversation today. Dr. Gatere, Asante Sana. Thank you. Um, before we, we, we talk on HIV, yes. you uh, work at uh, Transworld Radio Kenya. Yes. I want you to tell us about uh, that for those who may not know. I, I am aware that it has been there for a very, very long time. Yes. Longer than some of us, who, uh, you know, <laughs> when you were born uh, badai, yes. you know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> also tell us about TWR Kenya. Yes, uh, TWR Kenya has, has been um, in Kenya since 1976, so that is a long time. Mm -hmm. So we are actually celebrating our 45th year. Um, 45th this, year. This October. This as, October? This October. Oh, coincidentally. I, yes. I, I didn't know. <laughs> this October, which, uh, do, you, do you have a date? We, we, ha we, we, we looked at the founders and the time that they, they got here, so around mm. the 15th of October, mm -hmm. we, we celebrate um, our our anniversary mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, of course transfer radio Kenya is is a branch of the international ministry transfer radio mm -hmm. which broadcasts the gospel globally and that one started way back in 1954 Wow yeah wow. but uh, Kenya was actually the second uh, office to be opened in Africa mm -hmm. basically to produce programs for a shortwave station that is still based in the kingdom of Swaziland mm -hmm. uh, currently called Eswatini Yes, Watini. Yes. And uh, you, you used to uh, do some particular programs and then over time you expanded yes. and uh, you went and did more. Yes. Tell us a bit about, about the things that you do at TWR. Okay, basically we, we produce a Christian programs, some mm -hmm. of which are aired on KBC, mm -hmm. uh, Bible teaching and preaching. But we also do development programs mm -hmm. uh, looking at issues affecting the society, uh, issues of health, family, mm -hmm. lifestyles. And uh, we also run a network of FM stations called CIFA FM stations <coughs> mm -hmm. that are mainly among what we call the least reached people groups. Mm -hmm. So we currently have about eight FM stations wow. in the northern parts of our country mm -hmm. and also at the coast. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, so far, so good. Uh, how is the reach um, the, from the audience in terms of uh, the reception you're getting? You know, is it is, is, is this something that you can say that uh, so far TWR has made steps? Uh, in terms of you know the the number of people you're you, you're engaging with the way they're responding to the content you're giving to them and the inspiration that they're getting from you yes we can we can say that uh, mm -hmm. of course as we acknowledge how things have changed from mm -hmm. short wave yeah. to medium wave and yeah. now to fm mm -hmm. and also what is happening um through social media mm -hmm. and the fact that we are able to reach people from across the world really uh, from yeah. where we are 
-hmm. because of the technology that, that we have. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that um, we are engaging communities at the ground because mm -hmm. we are running our FM stations uh, locally, uh, on location. Mm -hmm. So we have a station like in Lodwa, so we are reaching people there. Our latest one is in Kakuma Refugee Camp. Wow. We also wow. have a station in Masabit, mm -hmm. in Lamu, in Voi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also reaching northeastern parts of Kenya through our FM uh, um, station. So mm. yes, we are, we can say yes, we are, mm. we are fulfilling our mandates. Wow. <laughs> yes. and, 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 and I love that. You know, what, what <clears throat> personally I'm getting that uh, mm. from this particular conversation, you know, I, I'm, I'm inspired. Mm. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. You know, everything at, at some point has a beginning and, and, an end. and, and, and uh, not an end, but mm -hmm. I want to say as a beginning, yes. and there will always be those challenges that, that you'll face yes. across time. You yeah. know, from uh, for all those years, 40 years down the line, you're standing strong, coming from the executive director herself. I believe that uh, we can all get inspired from that. The executive director, I mean, Kazi Hapo, for all these years, now I'm going to give up. <laughs> yes, don't give up. You don't give up. <laughs> yes. Dr. Beniz, I want us to touch on uh, HIV. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that you did your uh, uh, doctoral thesis uh, on, on, on this particular area. Mm -hmm. What was it all about? Okay, in my, my study, I looked at um, sexual reproductive health mm -hmm. campaign messages, and I looked particularly at the case of the Wachampango Wakando campaign in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And... Um, this, of course, animated from my interest in HIV, which began again through my work with Transfer Radio, mm -hmm. uh, producing uh, radio programs on HIV and AIDS, and also traveling ar around this continent and seeing what was happening um, in different countries mm -hmm. regarding this matter of HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an issue that is very close to my heart. And what are your findings as you are doing this particular thesis? Okay, um, before I come to the findings, oh. I, was, I was looking at um, why the rate of new infections mm. remained high among people in marriages mm. and long-term relationships okay. Okay. despite the campaign messages. And of course, one of the findings was the fact that um, a message that is targeting an issue like Mpango Wakando needs to recognize that this is such a complicated, it's a complex issue mm -hmm. because people engage in Mpango Wakando for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So when you do a blanket message, it may not reach everyone and you may not get the desired results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing was the fact that the campaigns thought were very good and memorable because people could still remember these campaigns many years. They mm -hmm. could remember what they saw mm -hmm. on television. But um, the campaign was not sustained long enough mm -hmm. to be able to look back and measure we aired this campaign for four years. These were the figures before we started. These were the figures after. Mm -hmm. And because of the shortness of the duration, then um, you find that when the researchers went back after the campaign, they found that the rate of new infections was still where it was before the campaign. Interesting, interesting indeed. Yeah. Now, uh, we, we are realizing that there is power hmm. in having a campaign. Yes. But now the sustainability of these campaigns hmm. is the issue here. Hmm. Uh, what do you think we need to do as a society in order to change this particular narrative? Because you're mentioning campaigns have not been that sustainable. Mm. Some start and stop in the middle. Mm. What, how do you think we should address such kind of an issue? Okay, one of the reasons why the campaigns stop mid, midway is mm. because of, of funding. Yeah. And um, that is because of donor funding, that campaigns are built on funds that have been availed mm -hmm. by the donors. So I think one of the ways is to actually have this as part of um, our initiatives mm -hmm. to fight against campaigns. The way we are looking to make sure that there is treatment, there is testing, we are also making sure that there is a budget allocated to make sure that the campaign is sustained mm -hmm. for a longer time. So with, Both, proper, fi with, with proper funding, yeah, it is sustainable? It is sustainable because then you do, you do a campaign on the media, you'll also do a campaign uh, at the grassroots 
where you involve the stakeholders, the CBOs on the, on the ground, the churches, the, the mosques, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. all become a part of that, the schools, mm -hmm. they all become part of that, uh, the campaign. And, and, and coming to the, down to the youth, mm -hmm. how can the youth also you know, be part of this? How do we put our hands on the ground and, uh, and, and be part of campaigns against, uh, you know, to raise awareness on HIV? Okay, um, the youth is a very, very critical, uh, critical segment of our society. Mm. And uh, if you realize uh, one of the things that has happened with the COVID was the increase of teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those statistics came out. But what the story did not tell us is the risk that um, these youth were getting exposed to contracting HIV, HIV, uh -huh. HIV and AIDS. Yeah. And um, statistics, I think, are showing that over 133,000 um, youth and teens are actually living with HIV in the country and um, representing about 50% of new infections every year. Wow. So it's, it's a real concern. That's a big number. Yeah, it is. And it's a, it's a real concern. So mm. whatever campaign that um, we engage in and develop, we must then have the issue of youth at the core. Because one of, one of the things that youth have lived their lives sometimes feeling this is not for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they have not seen youth with HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. this, this is hard to tell who has it or you who can't doesn't. Sell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they, they may not think about, ab about the fact that they are at risk. So the messaging is to remind them, A, hey, you are not immortal. Mm -hmm. You are not immune mm -hmm. to, to getting infected you can actually get infected and these are the statistics that are showing that youth are actually at risk. And, and why do we have such high numbers, especially among the youth? Is, is, is there a change or, that is there right now that uh, was not there before, you know, in terms of even communicating? How are we doing it before that we are not, you know, that is different from now? These high numbers in the youth is quite alarming. Okay, as I, as I looked at the campaigns that have been done before, yeah. one of the, the campaigns that was rated as most successful was actually targeting the youth, mm -hmm. and it was entitled Nimechil. I remember that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, uh, and unfortunately we've not done another one like that, yeah. uh, you know, uh -huh. in recent past. But the, that campaign really helped the youth to see that abstinence is possible. Especially for school going kids. Was, the, yeah, they were actually in uniform a, they were in, in uniform. Yeah, they were in uniform. The ladies were giving that sign, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, and in my chill. And so it became being chilled became cool. Yeah. So girls and boys chose to abstain. Mm -hmm. And actually showed the figures came down of uh, the age at which they were engaging in sex. So a campaign like that, having a season two, three, and four of the Mechil campaign mm -hmm. would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. so, so that is uh, one of the things. But when there's, there's no information, you are just doing it quietly. Then because of peer pressure, there's a lot of peer pressure among young people, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your friend tells you, oh, I had sex with my girlfriend. What are you still waiting for? Mm -hmm. You are laughed at if you're still a virgin. Yeah. So they want to go and experiment because it's also the age of experimenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we need to change mm. this narrative. Yes. It, it's, it's quite interesting because right now the things that we would not encourage before, we are encouraging currently. Yes. Um, it, how can we engage the youth? Because right now it's, we are in the world of uh, social media mm. and uh, social media has taken the world by storm. It wasn't there before, mm. but it is there right now. But because of social media, I believe there is a way information can be passed yes. at a faster rate mm. as opposed to how it was passed before. Yes. Okay. As you think of social media, one of the things I think is the many um, young media influencers that we have. Yeah. And, you know, we have them as ambassadors for products and other services. Yeah. And those are perfect for, to be ambassadors for uh, messages to the youth regarding HIV and AIDS. And uh, talking to the youth about first prevention, this is how you protect yourself. Mm -hmm. um, second, in case you get infected, this is how you get treatment. This is how you get care. This is how you get support, social support. Mm -hmm. This is the number you can call for for voluntary testing mm -hmm. yeah and and i'm i'm looking at the conversation we have currently mm. we are at a time where uh, everyone is talking about uh, the covid 19 mm. and uh, we are forgetting many other 
uh, underlying issues that are there, mm -hmm. like HIV. Yes. You know, how can we promote uh, the awareness on HIV during a pandemic like this? Okay, first I think is to, to look at um, HIV um, from the early stages and see that there was a time that HIV was actually what COVID-19 is, is today. Yeah. Um, where um, not much information was available. Um, the, the first, when the first person came with HIV, people thought, you know, this is, it is, yeah, the, it is witchcraft, it is, it is from the devil. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the church said this is a disease for sinners, yeah. you know, where people should be running. And so, there was a lot of yeah, stigma There was a lot of stigma, it. a lot of stigma. So there was no information. And now look back at uh, when, even in our own country, the mm. first case, leave yeah. alone who won, when the first case in the country, we locked down when there were, how many, three cases, you know? Yeah, yeah. And how the streets were empty. For a couple of weeks, we were locked in. Yeah. You thought if you go to the kiosk, you'll come back with HIV for sure. I mean, with, with COVID-19. <laughs> with COVID-19. With COVID so when you look at it, the, the beginning of, of the, both of these pandemics, they are the same. So there's a lot we can see from how then the governments of the world began to educate their people mm -hmm. and how, again, now we are beginning to educate people about COVID-19. Because we were living under fear. Are living uh, under fear. And also the earlier messages were also a lot about fear appeals, the fear appeal. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the pictures that were shown of people who are dying from AIDS were people who are totally skinny, eaten away by the disease, mm -hmm. uh, barriers where people are put in those plastic, um, black plastic bags being buried. And we saw that in the early days of COVID as well. You know, you feel it for the families who lost their loved ones in the early months of COVID-19. You watched from afar as your, your loved one is being buried by total strangers, wow. you know, mm. in, in, the, in, the, in those garments mm. of, of preventing um, covid so, so, so you, you see it's a lot of similarities. Because um, yeah, we, we are seeing HIV, yes. the human immunodeficiency Deficiency, virus, yes. and the COVID-19 virus. virus yeah. Both viruses, both viruses. Both have uh, hit us by storm, yes. but there, there's a way we can pick lessons from each one of them. Yes, yes. How can we be able to learn mm. from HIV? Mm. Are there tips? that the HIV gave us as a society mm. that we can actually use to learn and make preventary uh, measures mm. that can cushion us against the effects of the COVID-19? Yes, I, I think the first thing is the, the awareness. For, for the first few years, there was a lot of awareness yes. um, on HIV which was, was going on in the media, um, at the community level, in churches, just people coming to tell you, this is what HIV is, yes. this is what it is not. Mm -hmm. This is how you can get it, this is how you can't get it. You know, you not get it by sharing utensils, for instance. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of that, uh, that awareness. We need to do that also right now. Yes. People should walk in churches. Yes. And, and say, you know, COVID, you know, like COVID now, one of the things we are, we are facing is this vaccine hesitancy. People, because of the many <laughs> myths and conspiracy theories that we can't enforce yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> so people are just not going for it. Yeah. And, and so there's need for education, there's need for awareness uh -huh. that this, this, is, this vaccine, this is what it will do for you. Mm -hmm. This is not what it will not do for you, as you may have heard rumors that it will do this to you. Mm -hmm. It will not do this. this. is the research that has been done. These are the number of people that have been vaccinated and they're still alive. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's need now to, to share that information. The, the other thing that um, happened with the, with the um, HIV campaigns is also using um, personality, known personalities. You know, mm -hmm. and I remember one of the, the, the campaigns used uh, Jimmy Gatu, a media yeah. personality. Yeah. And the idea was to, it was called Fanya Hesabu. I was, that's one for where he sat on a chair like this. Yes, yes. And uh, he was... Uh, and he had a calculator. Yes. And he's telling this guy, just count the cost <laughs> of having this Mpango Wakando. Yeah. 
you know the financial cost mm -hmm. first of all and i think it came to something like 34000 yeah. paying her rent sending her parents money and also consider the the cost of contracting hiv and aids in the process and yeah. to decide whether it is worth it mm -hmm. So the, the, the same thing for, for COVID when you're being told, you know, wash your hands, social distance, wear your mask. Mm -hmm. What will it cost you? What do you risk if you don't do this? You risk contracting HIV. HIV. I mean, sorry, <laughs> contracting COVID. COVID. COVID you see, yes. then as we are confusing <laughs> the two. Yeah. You risk con contracting COVID. Mm. You risk being hospitalized. Mm. And these are the co this is what it is costing families. We all have been involved in 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 um, in fundraising because of of COVID bills. Mm -hmm. So this is what you risk, and mainly you could you could lose you could lose your life. Oh. Yeah. And and, and and some of these tips, youths can also learn from them. Yes. Um, is, is there a way that we need to communicate to the youths concerning uh, uh, HIV vis-a-vis uh, -vis the COVID-19 pandemic that c they can be able to associate with and learn from? Yes, I think one of them is that uh, anyone, we are all at risk. Mm -hmm. When one of us is, a, is at risk, we are all at risk. Yeah. And uh, one of the messages, again, that um, for HIV helped the population to see that was another one that became very controversial. And it was showing two women at the marketplace. Mm. And they are discussing the affair one of them is having mm -hmm. with a younger man. Yeah. Um, it was called, you know, Wacha Mpango Wakando, Lassivio Weka Kondo Mpangoni. And the idea, um, according to the message designers, was to show the population that all of us, are at risk, mm -hmm. even the ordinary woman at the marketplace. Yeah. And in the same way, we can, we can take that message and say, looking at COVID-19, don't think that because you are young and you survive, <laughs> you are safer than the mom at home who you might take this virus to mm -hmm. because you have no social distance, you have not worn your mask properly. Mm -hmm and uh, you have not sanitized or washed your hands, yet you go home to your, to your parents mm -hmm. or to your grandparents, and if they catch the virus, they may not be as lucky as you are. They may not survive. We, we, we need to be responsible. We, as young people. As individuals. Be, yes, yeah. and especially the young. That is not just about us. Mm -hmm. It's also about the people that we interact with. It's about our family, because this thing is being, you know, also spread through trusted circles, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, it's the same with HIV. Another of those messages was basically showing that HIV is spreading through a network of trusted partners. Mm -hmm. So you have a sexual partner that you trust, so you don't use protection. Mm -hmm. What you don't know is that that partner also has another partner that they trust, so they don't use protection with that protection. partner. Yeah. And through that network, it is it's being spread. spread. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, COVID, we can say, you know, we let off our guard when we are with family. You know, it's a family dinner after all. Mm -hmm. and, it's and, a and, family and, wedding. And for most youths, we, we tend to overlook yes. most of these things. Yes. And we assume them. Mm -hmm. It's going to kill us uh, or harm us. Or harm at us the end in of the other day. ways at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You may think at a young person, with the statistics of the young people, some have the ideas, but they are not as high as people, let's say, over 60. Mm -hmm. But then you could be the one who brought it to your over 60 loved one. Yeah, yeah. The psychological effect of that, how do you live with, mm -hmm. with that? So think about that before you engage in the risky behavior. Wow, yeah. wow. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the way we can unintentionally stigmatize some of these things. Uh, co comparing HIV and uh, the COVID-19, are there ways that we can be able to, you know, prevent uh, that unintentional harm that we make on somebody in terms of stigmatization? Because we've seen stories. We are, we, we know families and friends who contracted COVID. Uh, we know families and friends who conducted uh, HIV. Mm. Those, that unintentional stigmatization, mm. how can we prevent it, especially as youths? Yeah, that's now another lesson again from HIV, mm. because in the initial times, um, stigma was very high. Yeah. And um, one of the way of, of fighting um, stigma is really sharing accurate information mm -hmm. um, about, about the, the disease yeah. and how people get it. 
um, it was of course worse for, for, for HIV because especially in Sub-Saharan and Africa, it was mainly through sexual contact. Yeah. And uh, so that's why the church would call it a disease of, of sinners. But as information then is shared and you see that um, you can get infected even when you have not done anything. You know, you've not even like gone out of your marriage as okay. this campaign was showing that you may think marriage is, is safe, but actually if your partner is, is unfaithful, you are actually at risk. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, um, with the, the, then the stigma of course came with the way the disease presented itself, the yeah. way the person looked. Mm -hmm. And so the family, you would go to a village and you'd be told you that family was wiped out by COVID, yeah. I mean by HIV AIDS, mm. and nobody wants to be there, to mm. be near them. You find grandmothers taken yeah. care of, children left by parents who yeah. died mm. and th that family will be stigmatized by the society mm -hmm. then we come to see again as i was talking about the earlier days of covid nobody wants their person to be known that they died um, from covid and we we upload the, the families that came forward and said yes it is covid mm. that killed so and so mm -hmm. because one of the way of dealing with stigma is really coming out in the open and, um, and, 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 and using that information to help others protect themselves. Is instead of fighting silent battles. Silent battles. So instead of having so many people who died from a short illness, we, yeah. know we see it. And we understand because when a family is mourning, really, they are trying to protect their loved ones and protect themselves mm -hmm. from certain information. Mm -hmm. But um, if we encourage the family to, to come forward, as it happened with HIV, then people begin to see that, yes, this thing is real, because we still have people who do not seem to believe that COVID is real. real. But as more and more people come out and say, yeah, we are raising funds because we had uh, this, this bill in the hospital mm -hmm. of uh, 10 million or whatever, our patient recovered or our patient did not make it, yeah. then people begin to see, yes, this thing is real. And once we accept, we come to acceptance, then the next step is then, so what steps do we take? How do we protect ourselves? Mm -hmm. uh, from from becoming the next the next um, uh, victim oh, to, of, oh. the, of the virus because we we, we, we may do some things uh, unknowingly yes. we are just we, we are harming ourselves yes. and and intentionally stigmatizing ourselves yes. and those around us and those around us yeah. uh, I, I want us to look at the financial implications here mm. in terms of because you mentioned that uh, funding is an issue mm. when it comes to uh, these campaigns mm. uh, what are your recommendations uh, especially in regards to the COVID-19 vis-a-vis HIV mm. okay first you um, probably as from me from a media perspective already you, you probably know this that when this um, funds are in short supply yeah. one of the first things to go is like advertising yes and and that of course will then by extension include things like campaign mm -hmm. so if um i'm in an ngo that is in the hiv space and i have to make a choice whether to buy the arvs mm. yeah <laughs> or offer counseling or services <laughs> or, or or develop a campaign to air on kbc i may probably say let me first by a fight mm -hmm. and make sure that people have the, the medication. So I think the, the lesson is to actually um, ensure that we prioritize information. It's information is power, we are told. Mm -hmm. Actually having the right information is just as important as making sure you are getting that medication. Yes, it is. Because yes, it is. even that medication, you need to know this is how to take it. Yeah, yeah. And this is how to report if I have this, uh, this kind of, of side, side effects. Mm -hmm. So investing in in um in information mm -hmm. as a critical um part of of of, of the fight um against uh, the pandemic mm -hmm. and um you you realize that we are actually considered essential services uh, the media yes in in a crisis like that and uh, like this one now so even the, the campaign messages you know we've seen them in the media but i believe we can do more mm -hmm. more investment in terms of finances mm -hmm. can be put in by the government the ministry of health in mm -hmm. uh, this this um, uh, pandemic that we are in of of covid to make sure that we are sustaining those messages and that uh, we are doing the messages not just on the media but they are also again at the grassroots level mm 
Wow. So that everyone has everyone that information has the information and they are enlightened. And they are enlightened. So look, for instance, like now if um, we look at the counties, in which counties have we had the, the highest uh, vaccine hesitancy, for instance? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why? Why are people not going? Then develop a campaign to address the issue, the reasons they are giving for not turning up to take the vaccine. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and I love what you're saying because you're already giving the government recommendations mm. on what they need to do. Mm. Because we all have a role to play. All of us. As youths, as government, as media personalities. Yes. Um, I want us to bring this conversation to a close. And uh, I want you to have a final say. Uh, what should be our take home considering that uh, we are in a time where uh, many youths do not really take put much much weight on HIV, uh, I want you to advise that youth who is watching you today. What would you like, what would be your final word, just in a nutshell as you wrap this conversation up? That is your camera, you can speak to, the, to that Kenyan youth who is watching you today. Okay, for the Kenyan youth, um, I know there's been a lot of attention in the last um, 18 or 20 months on, um, on COVID-19, but HIV is still with us, as we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. The youth, um, the, the rate of new infections among the youth is still a concern. So it is important for us as young people first to take steps to prevent getting infected. Um, abstinence, we've talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, we have talked about faithfulness, that is for those who are in, in marriages. And if you're unable to do any of those two, the option is the, 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 the C, which is the condom, the ABC. Mm -hmm. um, then there's this information, if you're infected, there's information on where you can get treatment, where you can get tested, where you can, where you can get counseling. Please don't go through this alone. Mm -hmm. Make sure you seek, you seek help. And uh, we are grateful for, for centers which have been set in some places, specifically where they have Specific days when a young person can go, if they are, they are suspecting they could have contracted the virus, to actually go for testing, to go for, for counseling, and to go for treatment. Yeah, and also yeah. know the care, how to, to care for yourself. Because mm -hmm. it, you can be cared for this, this medication. It is no longer a death sentence. Yeah. 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 Dr. Ari, asante sana. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm and uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank I, you. I, I love the campaigns that you're, you, you, know, you are advocating for because at the end of the day, we need this information as youths. We need to understand a lot of these things because uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. People, youths like Googling. Mm. And you know, when you Google some things, you will, you will end up getting... Yes, a lot <laughs> of information that sometimes may not actually help you. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. But thank you so much for finding time. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure also. Uh, uh, I've enjoyed being here. Asante Sana. Thank you. That is Dr. Mm -hmm. Bernice Gatera, who is uh, the executive director at the TWR Kenya. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the HIV awareness. How do we communicate these particular issues? How do you compare the COVID-19 virus and the HIV? Uh, keep commenting, keep talking to us on our social media handles. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ram Maguko at Michelle Ashira and at Y254 channel. We're taking a short break. After this, we are still going to come back with much more. This is why in the morning.